Hello there, young man. I have a small thing I want to ask from you today. Can you have a look at these three images and let me know which one looks the most like a Cadillac? Chances are, you pick number two, as most people would, and that's understandable. The Cadillac nameplate for the last 30 years has been quite aimless and lacking in identity, despite their best efforts to reinvent themselves. Why is that? It's not for a lack of trying. For the last 20 years, Cadillac has produced some truly compelling automobiles, like the V-Series of performance cars and the Cadillac Escalade luxury SUV. In the last 10 years especially, they've truly put a lot of effort into making excellent products across the lineup. The interiors have gone from typical, subpar American interiors with plastic and fake wood all over, to something that's actually competitive in the luxury segment, with all the tech expected of a modern luxury car seamlessly integrated into the interior itself and the driving experience. Exterior styling, too, has become a strong point, with new models like the CT4 and CT5 looking quite handsome, in my opinion. The driving experience? Excellent, by all accounts, while BMW, Mercedes-Benz, and Audi have largely told customers that want a manual transmission option in their highest performance sedans to go screw themselves, Cadillac has mercifully kept the option for the high-performance CT4 and CT5 Blackwing sedans, in theory giving them huge credibility among car enthusiasts. And the predecessors of these two sedans, respectively, the compact ATS-V and the mid-size CTS-V, have also had this option as well, and both of these cars were heavily praised for their driving dynamics, just like the more recent Blackwing offerings. And as a result, the modern offerings from Cadillac are, by all accounts, quite excellent. The problem, though, is that at the end of the day, nobody gives a damn. GM may be making thoroughly modern and excellent luxury cars, but what are those luxury cars called? Cadillac. And that's exactly why nobody cares. To understand this, we must know what a Cadillac is seen as in the eyes of the public. And to them, it is a large, V8 engine, traditional American luxury car that is less car, more a boat on wheels. It is complete with poor handling, lots of aggro, fake wood, and velour all over the interior, indicating questionable build quality, and lots of interior space due to front bench seats, lacking a center console, which traditionally allows the large middle American posterior to spread out accordingly. Styling is flamboyant yet traditional, and is loaded with chrome all around. To top it off, partial or full white wall tires, a front center mounted hood ornament, a land out top, and written branding fonts in cursive are mandatory. This image it shares with its traditional rival Lincoln, Ford's luxury division, and both images are firmly rooted at least in the 1970s, not further back. However, while Lincoln became entirely associated as the go-to of cheesy airport chauffeurs and limo drivers, Cadillac's go-to image was something much worse. Like Lincoln, Cadillacs have become known as old people cars. But unlike Lincoln, Cadillacs have become more strongly associated as dead people cars. A quick Google image search confirms this, as five of the eight first images on Google for the search term hearse are images of Cadillacs. Even one of the most iconic movie cars of the 1980s, the Ectomobile, plays into this. It is a modified Cadillac ambulance that is central in the movie Ghostbusters. Ghosts are dead! The problem of the brand stereotypes runs deep, and even is embodied into the traditional Cadillac logo from 1963 to 2014. And that's the one everybody thinks of, let's be honest. The logo has two components. At the center of the logo is a coat of arms for the late 17th century French explorer that founded the city of Detroit and the namesake of the company, Antoine de la Motte Cadillac. My pronunciation is probably terrible, so please forgive me. Maybe having a coat of arms was a sign of prestige and pedigree 125 years ago, but in 2022, it's so tacky, not even Donald Trump would put it on his hotel bath towels. And that tackiness is also associated with stuffiness and an outdated definition of exclusivity that only partially works on the very oldest of customers. And realistically, how long are they going to be able to drive anyway? And then there's the second part of the traditional Cadillac logo. It's an outer wreath. And that is also a problem because it bears more than a passing resemblance to the customary wreath of flowers 
that are typically displayed at funerals and wakes, or a traditional viewing of the corpse of a recently deceased person. And for a car brand that is already associated with being a funeral car, this just doubles down on that association between Cadillac and dead people. This is a problem. Dead people aren't exactly buying a lot of stuff. In addition, the traditionally poor build quality associated with American cars, especially important in a luxury car, means that for older people with money, Cadillac is far from an aspirational product. In fact, older people with money more often go for German brands and Lexus than anything else due to the perceived quality. As during the 1990s, these same people likely traded their Cadillacs in for Lexuses and Mercedes-Benz. They're not going to come back. And as for current Cadillac buyers, the few that remain are often trading in Fords and Chevrolets to buy them. And those brands are traditionally associated with older, Rust Belt residing white Americans. That is already the cultural opposite of aspirational and temporary discourse. And given the current economic malaise of the Rust Belt, can you really expect this demographic to be able to spend 60, 70K plus on a luxury car? That's a hard sell when the social security check doesn't go that far on covering even the most basic of necessities. The point is, it doesn't matter how good of a car GM makes. The Cadillac brand will always have the connotation of being a big barge of an American car with a V8 engine that's for old people and dead people. Do not expect to change your customers' minds on this. It is a losing battle. You will not succeed. Cadillac, for the last 20 years, has spent all their resources trying to copy BMW, and that has resulted in excellent cars, but absolute crickets in the marketplace. Cadillac, for 2019, the last normal year before supply chain disruptions distorted the market and sales, sold 156,000 units in the U.S., while Mercedes-Benz, BMW, and Audi combined sold nearly a million within that same time period. That's six times more. And those results, they're not going to cut it for shareholders. Shareholders want to see a return on their investment. And it's not like GM is unaware of this problem. They are. Since 2014, they have tried to reinvent the Cadillac brand twice. They tried changing the logo and ditching the wreath first. They tried moving their HQ to Soho, Manhattan to try to connect with younger buyers. And they tried creating an all-new bespoke V8 engine and making capable, fun performance cars that drive well and check all the right boxes to try to connect with enthusiasts and younger buyers. It didn't work. So what are they doing now? They're trying to do something nearly identical all over again. They're changing the logo again. They're making the logo monochromatic. And they're making a push for all electric, and they're going to emphasize an online sales model. This will not work either. Monochromatic logo? GM is already the embodiment of big corporate America. A monochromatic logo makes me wonder if GM management is secretly the pixies from the fairly odd parents. An all-electric? That's a hard sell if your customers are rural and have few public transit options given the current limitations of electric vehicles. What about selling online? Again, Cadillac buyers are older. Why would you make it harder for them to buy your car? if they're your primary customers. On a side note, while I was researching this article, I found this piece online talking about the second reinvention of the Cadillac brand. Front and center was the vice president of Cadillac North America sales, Mahmoud Samara. One look at this guy and I thought, an AI experiment from with a business school has recently escaped. It is not ready for commercial use. Despite the current attempts to resolve the problem not working, there is a way out. Two, actually, depending on GM's goal. Is the goal to sell more cars that are currently on offer, like the CT4, CT5, and Escalade? Or is the goal to resurrect the Cadillac brand and bring it back to marketplace relevance? Because you can't have both. And if the goal is the safe goal of simply selling more units with the type of products that have already been developed, the Cadillac brand has to die. The current products, by all measurable metrics, are excellent and modern, but keeping them beholden to a brand 
that is a huge disservice to it. it just doesn't do the products justice cadillac fans that like the big boats of american cars of the past are continuing to be alienated by the direction of the brand of copying bmw and the people that would otherwise like the products on their merits alone such as myself are turned off by the stodgy image of Cadillac. And it's not like GM doesn't have the expertise to start a brand from the ground up. They did it with Saturn in the 90s. And the current direction of GM luxury cars would make much more sense. The products would have a lot better reception if they weren't called Cadillacs. However, if the goal is to revive the Cadillac brand, then the current products are not what is needed. They are many things, but they are not Cadillacs in the eyes of the public. Yes, it may be a car associated with dead people in times past. So, own it! Yeah, Cadillacs and are common hearses and associated with the old and the dead. So what? Imagine a Cadillac ad, directed by Tim Burton, starring Helena Bottom Carter. If Cadillac did that, they would own the marketplace of that subculture. And the success of Tim Burton movies, especially when, like during the 2000s, shows there is a market for that. And with this older image, they could easily call to mind the early 20th century era in which the brand was founded. The steampunk aesthetic from the late Victorian early 20th century has a huge following. The popularity of, of things like The Legend of Korra, Great Gatsby, and Fantastic Beasts has shown that. Using steampunk styling cues would absolutely work. Plus, the idea of an American luxury car is already so divergent from the norm of the car market in 2022, and younger generations crave authenticity. If you own that difference, you will attract loyal, dedicated fans. You won't push them away. And it would make Cadillac look not ancient, but hipster and counterculture. That is cool. While Cadillac as a brand is pretty far gone from a desirability perspective, with some unconventional repositioning, it could carve out a truly unique marketplace niche that would revive it and make it thrive. It also serves as a textbook example of how it doesn't matter how good your products are, if you have a bad brand, they won't sell. And it also shows that if you don't own what you are, you will always fail. And these are valuable words for both business and life in general. If you enjoyed this video, consider hitting the like button, leaving a comment, or subscribe to my channel. Also, feel free to check out my website, rationalmotoring.com. Link in the description below. Thanks for watching this video. See you guys next time.